Good evening, everybody. I am so excited that uh, you guys are here. Just so you understand, we have the makings of a beautiful fly-in. We have requested 215 meetings. It was 216, but today uh, one of my <clears throat> attendees uh, informed me that she has COVID and she was the only one in that uh, particular office. So unfortunately, uh, it's 215. And um, we are, I mean, incredibly busy on this end. So there's just a, a ton of work that's happening and we have a lot to dive into tonight. So let's just, um, the first thing I wanted to ask, I suppose, is if there is any base camp confusion and if there is, please write that into the chat so we know how to reach out to you directly. Um, we have tutorials. We, we, we are willing to walk you through anything. I don't, we have so much to go over tonight. I don't have the time to go over a base camp tutorial, although I was pretty ambitious when I wrote the agenda and it says here that I could, um, but I will not. Hmm. All right, 14 days of intensity. Um, most of this is pretty intense for uh, AccuCongress staff. Um, we are, we hit uh, the 14 day mark right before, the day before Thanksgiving. And um, I don't hold fly-ins typically in Q4, uh, the, the fourth quarter of the year, um, typically because legislatively people are uh, winding down, but also uh, my, my constituent base is, has holiday fever. And so uh, it has, it has been a an interesting thing to put our requests in knowing that they were going to break for Thanksgiving. And so we are not behind, but <clears throat> we are definitely uh, busy. <laughs> so we have been um, booking appointments since the 22nd, and we will get all of those loaded in. Um, this, my days are 16 hour days. And, and I uh, spend most of my time glued to the computer. Um, congressional staff don't have nine to five jobs. They work often until the wee hours of the night. So they're often in their offices still at nine and 10 o'clock at night. So I often hear from them at those times and I'm always working too. So I'm there to respond. All right, um, this is controlled chaos. And I don't know how, I. I I really don't know how to explain it if you've never done this. We are going to be um, running multiple Zoom calls at the same time uh, every 15 minutes for nine to 10 hours. So two weeks out, we were two weeks out um, the day before Thanksgiving. And so we have different roles and responsibilities. So the thing that I wanna talk about right now is, is what your roles are uh, even though we've now reached uh, a week out. So there are some people who have engaged in this and I'm proud of them and I, I will use some of their examples. Um, but essentially we've been loading things into Basecamp. That again is where we work. Um, I believe Amy Hausman, who by the way, I'm so sorry I kicked you back into the waiting room. I went to let Blake in and you hopped on at the same time. So I, I just, I don't want you to think that I was being rude. Um, the, the first thing that you guys need to do, uh, and you can find all of this in Basecamp, Amy Hausman asked the question, was it a different group? Um, essentially, I think Blake answered this, uh, and we're going to go over it in a second, but you do have, you usually will have two groups inside of the AccuCongress uh, Basecamp. One is um, AccuCongress headquarters, and the next one will be your state team. Uh, if you haven't been added to your state team, or if you're new, then um, please know that you can you can request it, or I can add you. Um, it's not a situation where you can add yourself necessarily. However, uh, I do have a list inside of um, the headquarters that gives the links to um, all of the state teams, so you guys can you can actually look uh, inside of your um, oh, I just lost the word. Inside of your message boards, 
inside of headquarters. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it should be the second post that I ever put up. So, and if it's not there, um, reach out to me and I will get you put into your team. Um, your responsibilities right now, you need to be researching your legislator um, and the staff member if you know who they are. Again, we're gonna go all over, uh, over all of this in detail. You need to be looking at Medicare, opioid, and district, district state demographics. And I've also uh, gone over that in detail. We'll continue. And then lastly, if you're bringing a patient, we want to make sure that you're providing those patients with all training materials um, and make sure that they're available for training on the night before, which is next Tuesday, uh, December 7th, and that they're available for at least the 30 minutes that you're district meeting is on the 8th. They do not have to be in the same room with you. They can uh, be in the comfort of their own home or office or wherever they choose to do this. Um, and they'll have all the login information, but know this, you are responsible for them that day. So it is not up to us to make sure that they have all the information. We are posting all of that in Basecamp. You will have access to an app that gives you all the information. It is your responsibility to take care of making sure that your patient is there, knows their testimonial, and um, is, is ready to be a part of this meeting. Uh, and we will train them on the seventh, so, or we will answer questions too. Um, we're there to hold your hand in any way, shape, or form that we can. What our responsibility is right now, ACU Congress is booking meetings and has been, and then we are putting those updates in the app and in base camp. Um, we're creating flyers and talking points. Um, and talking points are gonna be pretty standard. They'll go into the app, but also we wanna, we wanna make sure that you guys understand that this is an organic process and it's a dance and a conversation and it should be fun. And we want you to get to know these people because you want a relationship with them. And then, we're gonna to continue to train you, but really we're switching into a different gear as of tonight. And that is that we are going to be probably emailing and calling you directly. Expect it, we will be doing it. Um, if, if we can hear back from you via email, you don't ever have to hear from me. But if I don't, you definitely will get a phone call from me. And that's not too bad, I'm pretty easy to deal with. If, if I have Blake call you, you're in trouble. Just know it, he is no fun. So uh, it'll go like this, email from me or Blake, Callie will call you and then you get Blake. So <laughs> that's up to you guys. Be afraid, be very um, afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> so, um, okay, your grassroots journey begins in base camp. If you are not in base camp, uh, I guess at this point I would say, why not? Um, it is not a requirement. But uh, for those of you who are not, and you continue to reach out to me and ask me questions, I don't, I'm not being flippant when I say it's all in, in base camp. I'm just, that's where we work. And, uh, and that is the best place to find all of your information. So I have a little slide that's going to tell you what you need to be looking for in base camp. And this is the assumption that you are already there. If you're not, reach out to me or Blake and we will add you because you do need to be working inside of base camp. This is, you will not be comfortable if you have not seen the training material and been in base camp. We want you talking to each other. We want you talking to us. So the first thing, and Blake will have the pointer on this, we're looking in ACU Congress headquarters to the left. That is one that you should all be a part of um, if you can. What is available to you and you won't all be able to see this. It won't look like this. Uh, I see everything, you guys don't. So I've got the different state teams there too, which I've highlighted. Um, we do have all 50 states. The reason that somebody has an asterisk or a state has an asterisk in front, in front of their names is because those are states in which um, we had collaborative agreements through the Atlantic Symposium. So that explains the asterisks in front of the states, but we do have all 50 states there. And so if you do talk to one of your colleagues and they wanna be a part, they have until December 2nd to register. And after that, we are not taking any more because um, 
A, uh, it becomes very problematic to um, book meetings uh, short term. So it can be done, trust me, uh, we can't start this process usually until two weeks out. So, so it gets very intense, but um, we hope that people will go ahead and register by the second. Um, the things that you'll find in AccuCongress headquarters is a little bit different than you find in your state teams. First of all, message boards. I've disabled the chat, but the message boards are uh, important to everybody. You can post, I post all the time. Um, these are your ways of communicating with each other and with me. And then docs and files. You're gonna find a comprehensive docs and files inside of headquarters. Um, you'll see this little thing that says material research. We've copied that folder into every state team. So you don't have to worry about getting it there. However, that is, if you're ever missing something, headquarters is where you want to look first in order to uh, determine if it's, it's actually in existence already. Last thing I want to point out, if you look at the top right corner, it says pings. For those of you who didn't um, know what I was talking about when I say email me or ping me, that's where it is. It's at the top at base camp, it says pings. Or if you have a Mac, I believe it's to the left or right. I'm not sure, um, but I was told it's different. And um, that will allow you to have private conversations with me, Blake, or anybody else. And you can do it. Uh, it doesn't have to just be individual. It can be with groups. It's a great way to talk to your team privately, your state team. It's a great way to talk to your district team. And it's a wonderful way just to get in touch with us. So I make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, state teams. State teams are a little bit different. I've used uh, Tennessee as a, a example. I often use New York and California too. Tennessee is a small state team, but they are incredibly active. And um, so what you see here is sort of similar. You have the message board and that doesn't have anything in it yet. People are not talking to each other. And if you look at the docs and files, there's all kinds of stuff in there. That's that material research we went ahead and copied. And then I have not disabled the chat here. Here's your Acuvist chat room. And yes, we are calling you Acuvist because uh, that's what you are. And then there is a schedule. That was also disabled on the headquarters because I don't need to put 215 meetings inside the schedule for one day. Uh, that would overwhelm you. It definitely would overwhelm you. And if you look at docs and files, which is the single most important uh, section that you'll need to look at in, in state teams, what you'll notice is I have material re research there. There will be an overview in every single state. I will put your two Senate uh, meetings. The reason both senators are not here, by the way, in this one is it's, an, it's a moving target. It's an evolving process. I do things as they are happening, as I'm communicating with um, the legislative staff and the schedulers. And so because there's no point in creating a folder if they're not going to take the meeting. So what you see is the material research, you see the overview, and then you'll see that we list it by district. We give you the name of the legislator in case you didn't know what district you were in, but you did know the legislator. And then we tell you what their party is. Party affiliation uh, becomes important in terms of knowing how to present to each uh, legislator because we are, um, I, I would love to tell you that it's the same for, for these offices. It's simply not. Um, we are in a, in a state of affairs in which there definitely are things that Republicans are interested in over and above what the Democrats are interested in. And we need to be able to nail it for each of them. So we wanted you to know who you were dealing with. So this is where you find your state overviews, your district and, and Senate teams. And um, because of that activist chat room and the message boards, we want you talking to each other. Please start talking to each other. Use that chat. Okay, so now we get into what it looks like to have a district team and what you can look for there or uh, a Senate team. So as you can see, I've got Senator Blackburn here. I'm still using uh, Tennessee and then Tim Burchett. Um, there are two things that you're going to find inside of each district office and, 
and your uh, Senate offices. The communication with the office, we'll try and stay on top of, and the research and resources. Inside of that is staff information. So one of the things that, that I wanna make clear is we add information as it's happening in real time. So if you don't see something today, trust me, keep checking, you will see something. We strive for 100% meetings uh, across our, our constituent base. And uh, Blake and I work really hard to make sure that that happens. Um, so while you're doing all your research, we are um, uh, hassling congressional schedulers. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. So if you don't, in your folders, if you find a folder that only has the district and the name or the senator's name, but it doesn't have the communication with the office yet, and it doesn't have um, kind of all the things that you're looking for here, what we're trying to do is at least populate it with the name of the staff. And so that will be in your research, research and resources. It's If you see the two different folders that are right in there, one says Representative Tim Burchett, the other one says staff information. And inside that folder is where you're going to find, we will either list, as you can see on the right, the main staff and give you all of their names along with the Health LA, or we'll give you exactly who you're meeting with. Okay, I put this in here again, and this actually went into um, your material research folders for headquarters. We will make sure that that's added to all of your state teams too. This is just where you can find information on your legislators and your staffers. We've been putting this out since whenever. <laughs> I, I don't know when we started. I think it was August First or September. Right. We do it for every presentation. So this hasn't changed. The only thing that is different, uh, Blake, if you scroll down to staffers, um, I had not added Legistorm prior. Start with LinkedIn but Legistorm is a great place to find out information about staffers. Everything is a good place to find out information about staffers, but I really do love Legistorm because it's very, very um, specific to the, the roles that they play inside of congressional offices. I will say every once in a while on Legistorm, I've noted um, sometimes they have like a subscription issue that they try to push on you. Um, right. If you run into that, Type out the person's name in your, in your, I'm assuming most people use Google, but in case you don't, uh, into your search engine bar, uh, and then also type in Legistorm, um, just so that you can access it, and then you'll be able to access it for free. That is an excellent point, and I'd forgotten about that. Sometimes after about four or five congressional staffers, they will ask you to pay. Don't do it, okay? Reach out to us first, and... Um, almost everything, I'm sure everything that I put on there is, is a free account. So if you run into a situation where anybody who is asking you to pay for something, some subscription, you do not have to do that. Those are not the resources that we put, put up for you. So just reach out to us and let us know and we'll get you fixed. Up. But um, this is one of our uh, constituents, I love my New Yorkers. ASNI members are fantastic. Uh, so shout out to all of my ASNI members are here. By the way, just so you know, ASNI and New York, um, you guys have the largest groups going into your Senate meetings so far. So good, good job. Very proud of you. Okay. So he actually reached out to me and Blake and he, I've just kind of put it up there. He said, I've done some research about Congressman Delgado. How great. And then he, you know, he had watched all of the training videos. He knew what he was looking for, but he starts with um, uh, committee assignments, which is great. I highlighted when I put this into Basecamp, I highlighted the Committee on Small Business because even though he is a Democrat, he's sitting on something that uh, Republicans really take to heart, and that is small businesses. So uh, that's listed there. Next slide, please. And then he pointed out uh, task force and caucus participation, which is amazing because I highlighted all of the stuff that he, and I didn't change anything, by the way. This is everything that he provided. All I did was put it in pretty colors. Um, he understood that his 
uh, caucus participation showed that he definitely was interested in health-related topics. Next slide, please. This is uh, a copy of the bills that he had supported and either co-sponsored uh, or voted for. And we can delineate if we want to, there's a difference between co-sponsorship, obviously, if they co-sponsor, they're gonna vote for it, right? Um, but there are gonna be some that you can just check their voting records and find out how they, how they feel about that. So this is all publicly available information. And this person has done a really, really good job of getting to know his uh, congressional representative. He also took to heart every time we, we gave them homework regarding reaching out in the district. And he did some canvassing for Representative Delgado recently, which is amazing. And, um, and got to listen to him uh, in a public forum in the district. So he came across or came away feeling like um, he really knew that legislator a little bit more, knew what his heart was. He talks about, uh, he, he informed Blake and I of some of the things that he talked about. And, um, and that is an excellent way to, to make sure that you sort of are um, feeling who that representative is. I believe Blake, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he talked about how uh, Congressman Delgado actually uh, sounded a lot like me and you. We always talk about love and <laughs> relationships mm -hmm. and exactly right. um, and dating. And yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's supposed to, you want it to feel like a first date, I guess, mm -hmm. is, is the way that we always put it. Uh, be curious. And um, the more that you know about your legislator, the easier it's going to be to convince them to co-sponsor what you need. The one thing I'll ask, just for a jargon thing, can you explain canvassing? Absolutely. So canvassing is when you go door to door for a legislator. Uh, sometimes they do phone banks as, as well. Door to door is an older, probably more uh, pre-pandemic related. Um, but it sounds to me like there was some, some genuine canvassing going on on this. So you, you're basically going around asking other constituents if they know of the legislator, what they know about them, how. Um, how they relate to him and whether or not they would vote for that person. Blake, you have anything to add on that? I have not asked you once tonight. No, I'm so and that's sorry. fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that um, what is really beautiful about the work that's been done on this and the fact that he was able to participate in a town hall and canvas, when we say those famous words, and then you also back it up with evidence that I am working toward what you are doing and I appreciate how you are voting and what you're working for, they will, their ears will peak. They will listen. They will lean in, so to speak. Um, so this has been a, I couldn't imagine a more prime example of what exactly we're looking for, for a grassroots advocacy champion. That's right. That is absolutely right. I, I could not be prouder of him. We will put together a template that will show you, uh, and it'll go into the handbook. I'm finishing that up so that you know what to look for and how to look for it. But if you go into base camp, I try and break everything down step by step so that there aren't any questions. I, I swear to you, I'm not trying to be a fourth grade teacher. It's just that it's a pretty specialized field and I want you to feel comfortable. So uh, I walk you through things step-by-step. Step. For the staff information, I alluded to this earlier, we will provide you with a list of either important staff or the name and contact information of the staffer you'll meet with directly. I showed you uh, three different places in base camp. One is going to be um, inside of the district or Senate folder. The second one, it kind of blurred it here. I didn't mean, you see it where it says house meeting and meeting with, the, what you don't see is it actually gives you the name of the staffer that you're meeting with. Those can be found in the schedule of every state team, okay? Every state team. Once we book, we're gonna try and do that. And there's a note to that um, as well. 
just so we're clear. Uh, then the, the last place, let's see, we did the schedule, we did the state. And then um, actually, if you go into your state teams, your district team, inside of each of them, if you recall, there's two folders that you're always gonna have. One is material re research or research and resources. And then the second one is going to be communication with office. Definitely, you don't have to worry about it unless you have communication with the office, but in those, if you ever come across one that says meeting booked, you'll always find that information inside of that particular communication piece. So it'll start with the date of communication and then it'll move to what the result of that was. And then typically I provide the Zoom call information inside uh, the comments on that too. So. Again, you wanna look in the schedule of your state team. You wanna look inside communication with office inside of your legislators folder. And then uh, the last one, I forget. What did I say? <laughs> like it was- In the schedule or- Yeah, we have the schedule, mm -hmm. we have the, um, the communication with office. And then, I'm sorry, it's just inside um, the folder. It'll give you the staff information that's there. All right. Do you have anything to add? Do you want to say, so that's just the staff information, not necessarily that's the actual just schedule. just the staff information. No, then right. Nothing. Just the staff. Okay. So, and the reason we bring this up is we've asked you to do some research on your staff. Um, so if we know exactly who it is, we'll give you the name. That's the point. And the contact information, you don't have to use that, but you'll have it. And then uh, if we don't have a specific staff um, member for you yet, because we're still in negotiation with the office, we're gonna give you a list of pertinent staff. So the chief of staff, all of your important staff is gonna be everything from the chief of staff down to the district manager. And then we'll throw in the health uh, legislative aid as well, which is often the same person as the legislative director. All right, what else are you responsible for? Demographic research. I do not want you waiting to do the demographic research. And the reason is we just need a few pieces from you so that we can create the uh, flyer for you guys. So we're gonna, if you go to the next slide, we'll go right into you. I, I have actually posted this in Basecamp. So in very detail, very, very, uh, like a ton of detail. So in section one, I have, um, I've listed that you don't need to change anything. And it shows you uh, what we have, but I also have the, this example of the, the um, flyer we used was what I created for uh, Congresswoman Young Kim for Michelle Lau's group. I don't think, this is pretty self-explanatory. Like, do you have anything to add on this particular slide? Nothing to add, just no that's gonna be consistent across anywhere. So if you are Everybody. happening to represent in two districts for your uh, place of residence, as well as your workplace, um, if that occurs, just know that will remain the same. Right, that's right. Next slide, please. All right, so this is where I talk about how I, I'm a little hyper with regards to detailed explanation. So this is all in base camp. Um, I've showed you everything that's highlighted has to be changed. We don't want to put forward materials that aren't perfect. And so I've highlighted, you need to make sure that the district is right. You need to in the state for that matter. These little um, percentages, we're going to go over uh, in a little more detail, but I, you have all of this in base camp, just so you can look at it and make sure that you have changed all of the highlighted stuff. Um, there are just numbers that need to be specific to your state or to your um, district. We have the district stuff ready to go. The um, Senate meetings, the state, that will be uh, loaded up tomorrow. Next slide, please. All right, so A, make sure you change the district state and number and update your census stats. I have given you the links to go in. Uh, you can look up your specific congressional district. It's really fantastic, actually. It gives you so much information. Um, and then you wanna, like, if you'll point to the little blue button in the middle of that slide that says people, 
Okay. So right there, guys, um, we're going to have you looking in different places, but people is going to get you your population and it's going to get you um, uh, most of the demographics that you're looking for. Next slide, please. All right. So um, you want to make sure your Medicare stats for the district are correct. There are lots of people, if you put in Medicare stats for a specific congressional district, I'm not going to lie, Wikipedia is the first thing that's always going to come up. I know I don't have to say this to you guys, but Wikipedia is not a good source. Um, it's not that you can't find decent information there. It's just you have to make sure that it's accurate. And we don't know who's loading that up. And I think most acupuncturists hate Wikipedia anyway, because they're so acupuncture averse. Um, <laughs> so they probably don't use it. Uh, but anyway, you can find out everything you need to know, even about Medicare statistics inside of the census. And so um, we've got a couple of different places and we've provided you with the links for that. But Blake, if you'll, I highlighted this one this time, the socioeconomic is where you're gonna find uh, all the information that you're looking for about household income, and it will give you the information regarding uh, um, insurance. So whether or not they use public insurance, whether they're privately insured, whether they're uninsured, uh, they will have all of those numbers there for you. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is where I get into how you can find that information once again. Um, I use Kaiser Family Foundation. I, I years ago got a master's in public health and I found that Kaiser Fa Family Foundation was probably the best resource for literally every topic that I ever needed. Um, I love their site. And so they actually do uh, a lot of, hang on, Tiffany, do we share the information with the legislator on the day of the meeting or prior to? Um, what you're going to do is share the information the day of. What I am going to do is make sure that they have your materials ahead of time so that you don't have to ever worry about that. We're gonna, we're gonna try and make sure that everybody is covered ahead of time. Uh, the other side of that too is I used to encourage people, make sure you, you know, they were, they were in person. So you would make sure you went in with your folder. I do want you to have those materials on hand so that you, you know, if, if for some reason they don't have them, you can tell them that you'll, you'll email them. It's always, always look for ways to reach back out to them. So if you look here, we've got the state health facts, total number of beneficiaries by state. You have the Kaiser Family Foundation Medicare information. Please look there. You've got Medicare Advantage uh, enrollment update and key trends. And you have Medicare monthly enrollment data. And what we're going to do, if you look at any, I've, I've included the spreadsheet for that. They update it every month. So the last one is still September. I don't know why we're still on September, but we are. Um, and I've told you how to calculate the rate of increase just in case people didn't know. Um, so that's all right there. And you can do that for yourself, or I've also included a link where you can go in and, and just plug in the numbers and they'll do it for you. Next slide, please. All right, how many licensed acupuncturists are in each dis district? So I've, you only have to change a couple of things. And if you wanna know, we've already done the district analysis. So just reach out to us, please. And, and we will give you that information. Um, so that you can include it in the stuff that you're handing back to us. So I know this is a strange exchange, but I want you invested. Um, when you do fly-ins in which everything is done for you and all you do is kind of show up, whether you understand the basics or not, um, you don't have as much success when you're invested, when you've done a little bit of the homework, when you've um, when you've participated in uh, adding to the materials and you've done your research and you know your subjects and your subject matter backwards and forwards, it, it makes for a really fast, easy 15 to 20 minutes out of your day. Um, next slide, please. All right, so I'm giving you guys a choice on whether or not I have, I've created a blurb for opioid statistics or for opioids. It comes from 
a campaign that I created while uh, we were in the beginning of the pandemic for ASNI. And the reason that it's called Pain Does Not Pause is New York was under uh, an acronym for pause during the pandemic. And we felt that uh, as, a, as those who were seeking essential services status, that we could actually help uh, make sure that hospitals weren't overwhelmed at the time. And uh, the point was that, you know, yes, we were in the middle of a pandemic, but we all know that pain uh, continues during a pandemic, probably increases. Um, there is no pause for pain and addiction. Um, and people need uh, practice or they need access to their practitioners. And so um, that's what we're going to continue to go with uh, because it's alliterative um, and it it's helpful to to have just little taglines that we can then throw into um hashtag campaigns and pain does not pause is a is a great one very effective next slide all right so there's page two for health meetings just because we couldn't get everything on the page normally i would tell you you need a one pager for the state senate meetings uh or the state senators meetings there will be just one page it will be the same information, but state stats are actually easier to look up um, and it won't change much of anything. We will keep the Know Your Practitioner for the um, Senate information. We will in all likelihood, uh, because there's a lot of district demographic information, we'll only have one place that the state information is there. Um, and then next slide, we'll, we'll include the state map. This state map in the state of California, uh, it has 53 dis districts and we analyzed how many were in each district. Now, we can do better on this one. It's very difficult to look up all licensed acupuncturists in each district. That's not how it's done for the, the state licensee list. You have to look it up by um, zip code. And so what we had to do is we had to look up every zip code in each district and then go in and put those zip codes in to find out who the licensed acupuncturists were to get a, an accurate number. But I think we've done a very good job. And so each state that we're meeting with, which by the way, we're at 22 states now, which is lovely. Um, and we're meeting and that actually gives us access to all of our um, energy and commerce and uh, ways and means hard targets. Um, every state that we have done the analysis for, that's available and it should be loaded up into your folders that say uh, whatever the state name is and overview. That can be found there. All right, next slide, please. Okay, patients must attend the informational session next week, the, the night before, okay? They don't have to stay for the full two hours. Um, we wanna make sure that they're comfortable. We wanna make sure that they have um, everything that they need. We wanna make sure that they can ask questions, but more than anything, we also wanna make sure that they are properly trained. No one should enter an advocacy meeting without training. They, they just shouldn't do that. So that's my uh, barking moment at everybody. Uh, I put up the picture of the fingers on the pulses because uh, it relates to you guys, but also we need to have our finger on the pulse of every legislative office as we take our meetings. Next slide, please. One week out, which we're here. <laughs> okay, what is your job this week? Your job is to work with the team if you have it. I want you reaching out to your team members through that activist chat room, through pinging them. I don't care if you email them, figure out who each other is. And if you're alone, don't worry, we're gonna be reaching out to you anyway. You will never be alone with Active Congress. We will figure out a way to make sure that you have everything that you need and uh, access to all of us if you need us in, in that room. We're happy to be there. You also need to test your technology. So far, I'm just gonna tell you right now, the time that we needed lots of other technology, we had close to a thousand people in the fly -in. We do not have close to a thousand people in this fly -in. And so it turns out that we will likely provide all of the Zoom call information for you. 
So you don't necessarily have to host. Blake, do you have anything to add? Nope, okay. Um, you're gonna be requesting flyers for Senate and representative meetings from us, okay? That requires your little pieces of research in order to create those flyers for you. We are not asking you to create the materials, simply to get involved in some of the stats that are already there. We're also gonna provide the talking points for you. So you don't have to worry about that either. The only thing that you have to worry about is all the research and making sure that you can have this really organic conversation with your legislative staff. And by the way, guys, almost always it's gonna be legislative staff. I will say that there's, there's been uh, some, I, I think that we have more legislators who actually do take part in the Zoom calls that I'm certainly seeing that. Uh, there's more than, than what I've seen in the last two decades. So they seem to be very comfortable uh, talking to their constituents when there's a nice little buffer of a screen for them. So, um, so that's actually revolutionized clients. It's lovely for, for us. Allie, what can are you we gonna tell me when that's due? When is that request due? I would like the, all of your flyer information that you need back from us. If you guys can, I would, no, I would like don't, for no, you. Don't say if they can, when is it due? <laughs> it's due Monday. It's due next Monday. Monday at the very latest. Yeah, the earliest, uh, we, we would love for you to get us information prior to that. I, my days are about 16 hours long with work. I'm sure Blake's are the same. Um, I, we have a couple of people who are, uh, Annie Laura, my child has been working with me since she was nine years old. <laughs> and so she is um, helping with a lot of the booking and she will definitely be there as support staff on the day of because she's uh, used to it. And so you'll be hearing from her as well. And then, um, but the earliest uh, that you can get those materials to us, the better. It does not take a lot to recreate the flyer that's already there, but it does take a little bit of work. And so it would be nice if we can get these done as quickly as possible um, and that you are responsible for the research. So all you're doing is sending me an email or a ping that gives me those particular numbers that we're looking for. And if you go back through and you look at the material research, you'll see it. And what are we doing during this time? Still booking meetings, we're updating the app and we're putting it in Basecamp, creating the flyers and the talking points and training you guys and reaching out to you. You're gonna be hearing from us. Um, but essentially uh, I am attached to this couch almost all the time. <laughs> so I'm here uh, in front of this computer. Um, I'm gonna feel like veal by the time this is done. Uh, typically I only get about five hours of sleep in the seven days prior to this meeting. I am hopeful that because we're asking you guys to actually do some of this research that um, I will get at least a good solid five hours of sleep every night in the week prior. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. Okay, next slide, please. And hang on. All right, day of flying activities. And by the way, I um, kept this short because uh, we wanna go over the app next week. And this would have been a 70 slide presentation if I had not. The thing that you need to focus on, we really do need you to take the full day off. If you cannot do that, it's okay. Um, but do know this, schedules will change. They change the day up. They change five minutes before. They change um, over and over until, until we get it right. And that's because the legislator actually is going to try to be there, especially on a virtual call, but they're being called in for floor votes on a regular basis or committee hearings. Staff have to wrangle their bosses. And so they are um, equally involved in that process. And that's why, you know, it's not uncommon for us to, to move meetings over and over um, on uh, the day of and the day before and the week before. And in fact, it happened 18 times today, just today, um, where somebody would book a meeting and then they were like, oh, unfortunately I have to be, you know, in a committee hearing or whatever X happens to be. 
and then uh, they requested a change. If for some reason you do not get your appointment, we will still engage with this office. We will forward them the materials and we will uh, look for you to continue that outreach after this, because again, this is not a one-off, right? We want to make sure your patient has the call information. Again, you're responsible for your patient. We are not. Um, we didn't charge them. We're not putting them into base camp. I don't typically know who they are. This is your baby that you are bringing with you. And we want you to, to understand that, that um, they're incredibly important. Their, their testimonials are so moving. So you want them there. Uh, however, um, they're your responsibility. We want you to have your materials and the app and the talking points. You'll have that app at your fingertips. You'll have everything digitally on hand. I'm gonna go over the journals in a second, but we want you to complete those journals the day of. We want it as fresh as possible. I, I'll just ask the question, who here charts a week after you see your patients? Nobody, right? Hopefully. Um, unless you have an eidetic memory and you can remember every detail, um, that's just simply <laughs> not done. And so, I, and I do know that people take time to chart later. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I prefer that people complete their journal entries the day of. We have made it pretty easy for you to do this. And, um, and so while everything is fresh, while you're even feeling what you're feeling, because nerves will set in on these appointments and you'll, you'll, get, uh, you'll get to move in so fast and, and maybe you'll forget you know, what happens. Um, but so go ahead and journal the day of if you can. I would also say and if you have more than one person in this meeting, it is amazing practice to have that journal open during the meeting. We have yeah. questions that are in there that may guide you into another talking point, into something you may have missed. So especially if you have more than one person, have somebody documenting, watching their facial expressions, again, reading the room. We talked about this in the last few meetings um, mm -hmm. or trainings. And so see if one person can do that while you're uh, setting up your state and district meetings over the next few, or, or like meetings to go through the ask um, over the next few days. Um, and then if you will be the only one, which we hope you will not, and you will ask one of us to join you. Um, but if you are the only one, still try and have that journal entry open um, just on the side of the screen so it can guide you a little bit more too. That journal entry can be already found in Basecamp, just so we're clear. So it'll give you an idea going into the day of what you need to be thinking about as you take that meeting. But I would, I would stick to Blake's recommendation of having it open for you because it actually will help calm your nerves a little bit and provides a little bit of a guideline for where you're going. What are we doing? That day, we are running multiple Zoom calls at the same time every 15 minutes for nine to 10 hours. That's what we're doing. We're also providing support for meeting changes and activist communication. We'll be in direct communication with you all day long through Congress Plus app. We're not going over that tonight because like I said, that would have been 70, a 70 slide presentation. And, and you don't have access to it yet, but you will at the next meeting. You will, yes, you will at the next meeting and hopefully beforehand. And um, so that we can we can go over exactly how you wanna communicate through there and you wanna, um, you wanna be able to, that's, that's where your journal is gonna be found there. So um, next slide, please. This is the journal. <laughs> it's a big blow up of the journal. You can find the, the whole thing in, um, in Basecamp. What we're asking you to do, we start with your information, right? So things that are required, we just need your name and your phone number and your preferred method of contact and a bunch of other things that, that are specific to you. Next slide, please. All right. So meeting demographics are the next, uh, anything from the name of the legislator to the names of the staff members, what choice of technology they used, um, and it gives you some choices, some drop down lists. It's got a quite, a quite an array of things. It's going to get to a place where it asks you who the state captain is, who the district leader is, who the um, timekeeper is and who the content manager is. If you're all of those, it, it's already set you up to say, if it's not you, you know, you can add that information. If it's you, 
Don't worry about it. Next slide, please. All right, next we go into subject matter knowledge. As Blake hammered home while we were at the Atlantic Symposium, it is imperative that you ask them first what their knowledge of this subject is, both acupuncture and the bill. Um, so that's one of the things that you'll have to uh, discern. Um, so make sure you ask it up front. Okay, sorry about that. Next slide, please. Observations and impressions. This is why there are no unimportant people in any meeting, because you may be the content manager or the timekeeper. Um, but I said at the very first training session, one of the most important people um, is the observer. And that is because whoever is talking isn't often able to read every moving part of that meeting. They don't know necessarily if they lost rapport or if they, you know, they're, they're so busy trying to do their part that they may not be able to see everything. So observers are really important to me. We start with your overall observations of the meaning. And once you choose one, whether it's positive, neutral, or negative, you need to go accordingly. I've given an example of if it says if positive, and it gives you an array of things that you can check as to, to types of behavior that they uh, engaged in. Um, it gives you an opportunity to see if they co-sponsored or if they sponsored a companion bill, that would be the Senate only, by the way. Um, but again, if you take a look at it, there's plenty of things that you can choose from, okay? And we also have one for neutral meetings and for negative meetings. And there will be negative meetings, guys. Um, I dealt with a staffer today that um, I think, and I'm not going to say who it is, <laughs> I think might be a little difficult. But uh, this person is a has a, a JD, so they're a lawyer. They sit on Senate help committee staff. They are also, they have a master's in public health. So they are well-versed in what you're gonna be sitting down to talk to. So I, I actually will take this team aside and I may even attend this meeting just to make sure it doesn't get combative or off the rails. Those things happen. Uh, you just gotta recover from it. Next slide, please. All right, what is still to come? That is the first, the cover of the, the handbook that I'm putting together and trying to finish up. Um, and I do apologize again, guys, since March, I've spent about 18 days in uh, the hospital over four separate trips and it just keeps um, getting in the way. So uh, we will have a full activist handbook that will be placed in base camp. That will happen by Sunday, just so we're clear. Um, we'll have all the meeting appointments as they are happening, we'll be loading them in. So again, I know it feels chaotic and I know it feels um, like it's not put together, but this is the nature of a fly. <laughs> they don't let you book prior to two weeks in advance. There are some, but not many. Um, many have moved to con contact us in a week and we'll talk about that. Um, there's still this last meeting next Tuesday with a Q&A. We expect if anybody who is going to take part in this fly-in, we expect you to be on that call. And if you're not going to be able to be on that call, uh, we'll record it. <laughs> and you can definitely see it there. Um, I, I can't threaten you like I threaten my children. So, and then the last thing is uh, um, for those who have well, no, patients, it's not the last thing. Patients must attend that. If they've not attended anything else, they have to attend that one. And then we'll give you follow-up instructions because this, again, is not a one-off. We're going to do this fly-in, see what happens uh, at the end of December um, or at the beginning of December for us. And then we're going to let everybody go uh, through the holidays. By the way, for all of you um, who are Jewish, happy Hanukkah. I am so sorry that this is happening during this time. I, I did pick a date that was outside of it, but I forgot that there would be training. And, I, and so I, I, I didn't mean to be disrespectful. And, uh, and I apologize for that. So once we're through with the holidays, uh, inside of that activist handbook is going to have an appendix that also includes 
uh, phone and email scripts for both you and uh, your patient to be able to follow up with. Phone is the best. Um, Blake and I actually talked about this today. He disagrees with me, I think. Um, he starts with he starts with email. I Go ahead. start nice and I give them an opportunity and then I give them the phone call. <laughs> this is why Callie saves me until the last to be the phone call because I'm not as nice on the phone. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> but he's lovely. He's fantastic, actually. He gets you get it the done. southern charm whenever you get an email from me. But watch out. You, yeah, you do. You do. Um, I will tell you that the most effective way to to get your legislator's office to do anything is to place the phone call. So I actually skip the emails and go straight to the phone. Why? Um, as a constituent, they can't hang up on me. And um, as the lobbyist, by the way, they can't. <laughs> and they might. But for you. Uh, if you go straight to the phone script, then you in all likelihood, uh, by virtue of the fact that you have convinced them to co-sponsor or they are tired of you calling, you will probably get that job done. Next slide, please. I think it's the last one. I, that's not mine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right questions. I want you to ping me or Blake inside of Basecamp. I've given you my email address. I almost put Blake's today, but it would have been his personal one. So he is notified through Basecamp. If Blake wants to give out his email address, he certainly can do that. Um, and I, you know, that's up to him. And he did it. <laughs> so um, we will list in Basecamp all the, all the ways to reach us, but that is where we work. And so it is the best place to go.